Okay, hi Andrew. So, in this video, I'm going to give you my feedback on your first assessment on polynomials. So, let's take a look at some of the misconceptions that you had during the test. So, I will make this a two-way feedback. So, in this video, I'll just focus on the misconceptions. And for every question that you did not answer, I'm going to ask you to go to the mathematics channel, to the YouTube and view examples of the items that, did, that you did not answer okay so let's start with the first one so let's hide this first so let's focus on the first item so the first item is about multiplying polynomials so we have a binomial multiply to a trinomial so as I can see so you're able to get most of the expressions correct except for the second one so I think this is just a minor mistake so you multiplied 3x and 2x squared that's how you got the 6x cubed when you multiply 3x by negative 4x or minus 4x you answered negative 12x but the correct answer should be 12x squared so that made the third uh, expression wrong because you will be having negative 12x squared and another 2x squared which should have been a 10x squared which is negative and the only x that you can add would be 9x and 4x so this should have been a plus 5x so just because you missed the square so that changed the final answer okay so my suggestion is when you multiply, you have to be careful, so you have to check whether your multiplication is correct. So, but I can see you know how to multiply. This is more of like a carelessness rather than not knowing how to do it, okay? If we go to the second question, so this is about division. As I can see, there is a need to understand what expression should be placed here now the guiding idea is that you have to think of an expression to multiply to x so that you will get a 4x cubed now what you did is you, you just use an x which will just give you x squared so you're lacking a 4 so make sure so and actually this should be square because you have a cube it should be x squared times x equals x cubed and then at the same time, so going back, we, you are lacking a 4, so there should be a 4. And then you have um, x squared, 4x squared times 5 should have been a 20x squared. Okay, so I guess letter B is, uh, I, I think what uh, the help that you need for letter B is, I'm going to ask you to watch the video I made on dividing polynomials okay so, so that I can uh, discuss some of the questions that you answered here in the test so I want you to watch the video on the division of polynomials and then after watching it you go back to this example and then you divide again okay so based from what I see in your solution a crucial idea is that you you miss uh, you're, you're not sure what to multiply on the on this x so that you can get 4x cubed. So that should be the main idea. So find an expression to multiply to x so that you will get the first term. And after that, you just subtract and the procedure will be uh, the same. Okay, but again, I need you to watch the video on division on polynomials. Okay, in the third one, uh, second number two, you were able to get it correctly. So I think you understand the idea of the factor theorem so how we get the, the or how we use a factor theorem in solving problems like this so this is a typical problem we're in you have to find k so what you did was you supplied the the value x equals 3 to every x and then equated it to 0 okay so there's no problem with number 2 now going to the second page so let's see what you have here so you got number 4 correctly but let's see what's your number three so number three 
Calculate the remainder when the expression for x cubed minus 5x squared plus 3x minus 2 is divided by x plus 1 and verify whether x plus 1 is a factor of the given expression. Now, we learned two important theorems, the, the remainder theorem and the factor theorem. So, remainder theorem and factor theorem. The remainder theorem says if you're dividing a polynomial, so in this case, if you're trying to divide the polynomial, so this is the polynomial, by a binomial, then what you can do is you place the number that makes the binomial 0, and that is x equals negative 1. So if you place negative 1, that is 0. Now this number, when you put it on the polynomial, to every x in the polynomial, you will be getting the remainder. So you don't actually have to use long division, although that is okay, but this is a long process already. So we have introduced a shorter way of finding the remainder, and that is you identify when the divisor is equal to 0, and in this case it's negative 1, and then what you can what you will do with that negative one is you place it on every x on the polynomial and you will be getting a number and that number is the remainder now if you ended up with a zero then that means there is no remainder okay so next is you have to verify whether x plus one is a factor now these two theorems are related to each other in terms of the process Remainder theorem, you substitute negative 1, and then you will get the remainder. The factor theorem will also do the same. You substitute negative 1 on every x, and if the, re the value will be 0, then you can say that the divisor, whatever is given, is a factor of the given expression. So same, right? So if you put the number, you, get, you, get it, uh, you got a final number as 0, then x plus 1 is a factor of the given expression. Okay, but I want you to, to do this again. There's a video on how, or a video example for this problem, so you can watch that in our YouTube channel. And then I want you to try this number 3 again. But, but my, my note is, you don't have to use long division anymore because we have the remainder theorem to find the remainder. Okay, number four, the expression 5x cubed plus 3x squared minus 2x plus h leaves a remainder of negative 1. So again, this is all about remainder theorem. When this is divided by x plus 3, the same idea, so identify the number that will make it 0, so you got it correctly, x equals negative 3, and you supply it to every x, and then you equate it to negative 1. So good job, you got number four. And then you have number 5 and number 6. So you left them blank. So what I can suggest, so I will not be solving it here, but there's already, uh, there are available videos uh, showing how to factorize and how to solve equations. I highly suggest that you watch those videos and then try these questions again. Okay, so I'm not... Uh, I will not be giving all the details when I give feedback because I also want you to take part in in getting the solution. Okay, so my my thing is that I, I give you the idea and then you try to understand. For example, if you watch a video, try to understand the videos and then uh, you try the problems again. Now for some misconceptions that you had in assessment, uh, assessment then that will definitely be part of the video. Uh, feedback okay so I hope you uh, take time to practice uh, problems similar problems to the one I once I gave in the assessment and for sure uh, I'm confident that there will be a big improvement in your score okay that's it